In this video, we're going to focus on how to solve quadratic inequalities. Most quadratic inequalities create a double boundary. Not all, but by the very nature of being a quadratic equation where you have an x squared in it, there are usually two solutions. So that's why it's going to be a double boundary problem. The first step, as many steps with our solving our inequalities, uh, especially the double boundary ones by hand, is that you want to solve it as an equation first. So this greater than or equal to is going to turn into just an equal sign. And so as we set this up, we look at a quadratic and we're trying to solve it by hand. And so thus, as we do this, we know that we want quadratic equations to be set equal to zero to help us find both of those solutions. So I've added the 3x from the right side to the left side and put it in your standard form. So we have 9x squared plus 3x minus 2 is equal to zero. And the way that we want to solve this is either factoring or your quadratic formula. This is an example that can be factored, so as you, it gives you an opportunity to practice those factoring skills. And what you should come up with is 3x minus 1 times the quantity 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. By the zero product property, that means you can set each of these parts equal to 0. And what we will end up with is x equals 1 third from this factor and x equals a negative 2 thirds from the second factor. Those are our boundary points that we're going to use to do the rest of the work. So the next part is going to be to draw the number line and label those boundary points. So here we have our number line, and so I've changed it so we have zero and we have negative one, and one give us a little bit of space to be able to write out the boundaries, or show the boundaries rather, of one third and negative two thirds. And we have to remember that when we create those boundary points that we have to think about open versus closed. You always have to go back to the original inequality statement, because that's what we started with. This one has an or equal to, which tells us this, this will be a closed interval, meaning that we can actually equal one-third, because at the x value of one-third, it makes the statement true. Also, at negative two-thirds, it makes the statement true. So I put a point here at uh, negative two-thirds and at positive one-third. Our next step is to test an x value, which is between these boundaries. That's the easiest way to do it, is to take any point in between these boundaries and test it in the original inequality. Zero happens to be the easiest point that you can choose. Uh, you don't have to use zero, but is definitely the most simple one to choose as far as plugging something in. And so I plug it back into the very original inequality statement, not any of the work that you've done or after that, but to have to be the original statement. And so here we have 9, 0 squared minus 2. And to check, see, is it actually greater than or equal to negative 3 times 0? As you simplify, 0 squared times 9 is 0, and that minus 2 is a negative 2. So this statement says that negative 2 is greater than or equal to 0 at that particular test point. Which, of course, that is not a true statement. So therefore, x equals 0 does not satisfy the original inequality. So if it does not satisfy, what that means is that zero doesn't work, neither do any of these points within that, uh, that region of those two boundaries. Those don't work either. So we're going to shade our number line on both sides, the left of the boundary and the right of the boundary. So I've added that in there, and so we have a shaded region here to the left and a shaded region there to the right. Now our final step is to write the answer as an inequality. We have two separate regions, not just a single one in between, but two separate regions. So any x value that works in this original problem will either be to the left of this left boundary or to the right of the right boundary. And so that's why the inequality statement is an or statement. We'd say x is less than or equal to negative two-thirds because we had an or equal to in the very beginning, or x is greater than or equal to a positive one-third. Again, that or equal to tells us that we can close these boundary points as well as include the um, or equal to sign with our final inequality statement. So that's how we would write out the solution to a quadratic inequality using both a number line, so a graphical representation, and an algebraic representation with the inequality statements.